Greetings one and all, my name is Lancer and we're doing an interesting kind of video right now. I know it's been a while, but again, excuses, excuses, just shut up. As you can see, I do have a new microphone, so this is just part of me testing that out. Recently, there's been some updates in the anime news, more specifically an anime that if you've seen my video on it, I do hold kind of dear. Uh, and that, of course, is Don't Toy With Me, Nagatoro-san. This was definitely my fa one of my favorite animes of last year. And uh, in that video, I talked about how it would be very interesting to see how they would handle it if they did a dub of the show. I have a feeling they're going to make a dub of this. I mean, I kind of hope they don't, but at the same time, I want them to. It's, it's weird. I'm split on it. I don't want them to because I feel like that they, it would ruin it. Because it's one thing for having a... A Japanese subbed show have like this modern kind of lingo and stuff. If it's a dub, I want to see them handle it because it's going to feel like kind of like an abridged series almost. If they do do it dubbed, I hope they do it well. I hope they get good voice actors. Of course, in that, I said that it would be interesting, though at the same time, I wouldn't be upset if they didn't do it because honestly, the nature of that show and the writing in it doesn't really suit well with a dub, which is why. Honestly, I was kind of thinking that maybe they shouldn't do a dub, but as I found out recently, only like a couple minutes ago, Nagatoro-san does have a dub, and I think it just recently came out. The first episode is up, and I have it pulled up right here, and I kind of wish I did this sooner because I watched a couple minutes of it up to the dialogue, and oh, have I got some things to say. So first of all, I'm just going to... Play a little, little smidge of a clip here. Well, so much for my favorite quiet after school study spot. I can't stand girls who behave like that. Yeah, first of all, I'll say the dude, at least in this first episode, for what I've seen so far, is actually doing a pretty good job. I actually like his voice. When I first heard it, I initially thought that he was, um, I keep forgetting the actor's name, but he's he voices in dubs. Uh, characters like Waver Velvet and Fate Zero, um, Akaza in Demon Slayer. Um, you know, he's voiced a, he's, he's that kind of voice. I thought that was him, but then obviously I listened more. It's like, no, that's not him. I was kind of hoping, because in the sub, it's the same guy who voices Midoriya. So, in the, in the Japanese. So part of me was kind of hoping, it was like, maybe it'll be Justin Briner, who's the English voice of Midoriya. But uh, of course... That that's not that, that would never happen. The guy doing this voice though is actually pretty good. I mean, it's not hard to do like an awkward high school kid, but you know he it works. And I did look up uh, who he is. He's voiced a couple of things. I can I can't exactly place his voice though. Um, he voices the dub voice of Speed of Sound Sonic from One Punch Man, uh, the main dude from Toradora. But yeah, he's voice he's he's done some some things. So it's like when it comes to the main dude. So far, I don't have any complaints. He, he's pretty good. The other girls, too. Man, come on. This is taking forever. Sakura's voice is a little interesting. Again, it's I'm trying not to compare too heavily to the sub, because obviously, dub versus sub. But when it comes to voice acting, uh, Ijirana de Nagatoro-san is incredible. Like, I love the voice acting in it. Like, for almost every character. Sakura, I mean, she's not too prevalent of a character, so I don't really mind it, but... She does kind of have like that softer kind of voice, but it still works. Where the hell is Yuko anyway? Girl hasn't been. And then this girl, I'm forget, I'm forgetting her name, but you know she's kind of like the second girl, kind of like the rival girl. Yeah, her voice is interesting too. She sounds like you know that kind of bratty teenage girl, which of course works. But the bulk of why we're here is of course the staple character, who the show's named after. And ultimately why I had to make this video. Because I just couldn't keep quiet about this. Especially when I was screaming to myself a few minutes ago. Now, the voice of Miss Nagatoro. If you watched my video, which I will link up there, of my review of Nagatoro-san when it ended, you'll know that I heavily praised Sumire Usaka, who's the Japanese voice of Nagatoro, because she did an incredible job because half of what I loved of Nagatoro was the voice, because honestly, that is this. Because I talked about in that in that video that Nagatoro was just like her own entity in every 
just the way she was animated, drawn, and how she was voice acted. That was my main concern if there ever was to be a dub of this, is how they would handle her character. And, which like I said, every character I've heard so far, pretty good. I was not prepared, like she talked, had a few lines earlier and I heard and I was just like, hmm. But this is when it really sat in, I was just like, oh no. I'm a first year, and you are a second, correct? <sighs> I'm going to play the rest of the clip, but it, it gets worse. Yeah. Nice. That makes you my senpai. <laughs> when it comes to dubs, that's the thing that irritates me the most. It just, anytime I hear that in a dub is if they say like, Nagatoro san, or chan, like if they say san, or chan, or senpai, in a dub it just i don't know it's just it's kind of like that cringe it's that part where it's like i then understand why people hate on dubs so much because you know if you know me i love dubs like my hero academia fate dragon ball like i watch all those dubs because they're incredible dubs i am a huge advocate for english dubs they are really good but i do understand i am able to hear both sides of the arguments because at the end of the day like the argument of which is better sub or dub isn't really an argument because it is what you prefer at the end of the day. I'm just an advocate for shows where people just automatically write it off as bad because it is in English, but then like people who won't even give the dub of My Hero Academia a chance, but I'm just like, it is like, like the dub of My Hero Academia is like Dragon Ball Z levels of dub. Like it is so good. When it comes to shows like this, now of course, of course, this is a show where it's like slice of life, romance. When it comes to me watching anime, like I have like my, my go-tos. If it's a slice of life romance kind of thing, I'll automatically go to sub because that just feels more natural to watch. But if it's shonen or action stuff, then it's like, I'll look into if the dub is worth watching, but by default, usually I'll watch it in Japanese. But if I look through the cast list and I see actors like Chris Sabat, Crispin Freeman, Patrick Seitz, Kerry Walgren, Bryce Pappenbrook, then I'll be like, okay, I'll give the dub a chance. But And more often than not, the dubs will be really good. This is as far as I got in this episode before I was like, I need to do a video on this. Because this just... Again, this is the first episode. But as I kept going, I went a, little, a couple seconds further as she was... Uh, Describing to vanquish the dreaded demon lord, but lo, they are set upon by soldiers from the kingdom who are lying in wait to ambush them as they journey home. It does kind of grow on me, <laughs> and I did look at this voice actress. She's done some things. Um, she's a dub voice in the current season of '86, which I don't really like that show too much, but hasn't done too much that I've seen so she's fairly new which is surprising considering that I'm assuming this is like her next big thing because you know in voice acting you'll usually start out like getting a, like maybe a couple lines as like a background character then you'll work up to like a character who doesn't have too many lines and then you'll get maybe a character like this so I'm assuming this is her big chance to shine which I can respect she's being charismatic with the lines at least it's just when it comes to the character of Nagatoro there's a precedent honestly when I first heard her voice I was like is that Project Melody? Not gonna touch it now. It's gonna be fine. I want to play with it, and I want all of you to see. But you know what? I'm just not gonna touch it. Put her voice, and then put it next to this. Freed! He fights alongside Lady Elizabeth, a beautiful knight from an enemy nation, as they undertake a perilous mission. It is very similar. You see, when I initially heard her voice, and the fact that she says senpai, to be fair, in a show like this, I think it's it'll be fine because they say senpai a lot, and it, it's it would be hard to like kind of swap out saying upperclassman or elder or whatever. Like in shows like Cells at Work, that was a show that I decided I had to watch dubbed because it dealt with a lot of anatomy words and stuff, and I was just like I have to like hear this said to me in my native language because it's like reading it is just gonna give me an aneurysm. But in that show, they said senpai. A couple times it didn't irritate me too bad but in a show like this they like nagator's every other word is senpai so it's like eh. i'm not making this a reaction or anything like a reaction series or anything this is mainly just for this this is something i'll just watch on my own time i do want to see the voice actor grow in this role for nagatoro because i believe she can do it i can hear how enthusiastic she is 
Like, I think she could easily pull off this role. It's just, like, obviously, like, I'm biased towards Nagatoro. Again, it's one of my fa new favorite animes, at least, like, slice of life romance uh, anime. But so much so that right now, I'm currently going through a teasing Master Tagaki san because watching Nagatoro, I want to watch some other show like this. So. I just got done with the first season, so I'm heading into the second season. It's 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 good so far. So yeah, I want to see how this dub goes. What I'm really wanting to see is how well she does when it gets to like the real romance stuff. The scene I'm really thinking of is uh, the end of episode 10, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's the end of episode 10 uh, when she really stands up for Senpai, and she just like stands up to the the president, being like he like draws really good and stuff like that. So it's like, when it comes to the really emotional stuff, I'm looking forward to seeing how this voice actress really is able to express herself. So yeah, that's just this video for right now. This is also just me mainly testing out the new mic, seeing how well it is. It is a HyperX uh, quadcast. It's like, it's not too expensive of a mic. It's just, I wanted to try getting more into more professional type feeling for the channel. Hopefully I can get into making more videos. It's just my laptop's kind of doing some buggy stuff right now so if you see like some gaps in between videos i apologize for that thank you all for 30 subscribers and everything see that's been going up and watching the views thanks for all the support and like the views have been shooting up on uh, my reaction to the dragon ball super superhero trailer which i figured that was a given but still thank you all for watching i'm lancer thanks for watching